Hey everyone, this is Lomi and I had just finished setting up in my studio to make a pattern when an unexpected package arrived and I took everything back off my table so I could open it. I do have doll stuff on the way, but it's not a doll this time. Instead, it's the very first printed copy of Rune and Feral's story, the book I've wanted to write since I was a kid that made me want to start writing in the first place and ultimately drove me to this hobby. I was so excited, and I originally made plans to film the opening of the package and share my thoughts right then, but it didn't quite go as planned, because after spending more than half my life trying to get to this moment, it ended up being incredibly emotional for me, and I couldn't do it. There's too much to unpack in a single moment like that, when the one thing that's always kept you going and inspired you to create is finally becoming real. In the end, I couldn't think of anything to say, so I decided that wasn't going to happen after all, so it was best for me to put it away for a bit and focus on what I'd originally planned to do. But for anyone who wants to see, I'll share a peek at the print proof at the end of this video. So in today's project, I'm working on an outfit for all of my mage characters. In my story world, the mages of Kurban Temple wear a uniform, which is a simple robe made in the colors that signify their rank. I have three dolls who will wear these robes, so I figured it was time to actually start making them. Today, I'll sort of walk you through the process behind all the patterns I share. When I create a pattern, I usually start by doing a simple sketch of what I want the outfit to look like. Sometimes I base it on character artwork I've done, but most of the time they're just really ugly sketches that let me get a general gist of what I want so I can break it down into pieces. I've drawn the robes a couple times before, so I know what I want them to look like, but I hadn't put thought into how I'd make them before. A mage robe should have a simple placket and a standing collar, a long skirt that isn't too full, and reasonably straight long sleeves, but for all's robes I've always drawn as being close-fitted at the cuff, because she's a healer and loose sleeves would probably get in her way. I do a rough breakdown of what pieces I know I'll need. The front and back can be one piece each, the sleeve is easy, as is the placket and standing collar. For Feral, I'll plan to make a separate cuff that will actually button on over the sleeve of the robe to hold the loose sleeve in place, because that makes the most sense for how she would have customized something that was standard issue for all mages. Sometimes after I do my sketches, I check to see if I've already drawn something that could be modified to work. Since all patterns are based on the same building blocks, I usually have something to use as a starting point. In this instance, the pattern idea is really similar to the kurta I made for my SID guy Arios. I print a copy of that pattern resized to fit my girl dolls, and then I'll make some modifications. The collar and placket don't need much work, but I'll have to change the front and back and make the sleeves longer to fit properly. I trace the existing pattern pieces onto a sheet of craft paper because it's what I have handy, then I make my adjustments there. If you want more information about resizing patterns or altering them to make new patterns, I already have videos about that, and I'll put links in the video description. And I also have instructional videos on how to make a few basic patterns based on doll measurements, so I'll link to those too so that you have a starting point of your own. I took measurements from my dolls before I started, so I know how long I need these to be. I keep those measurements handy as I work. After the new pattern is done, I cut out the pieces to be the test version of the garment. I keep a lot of scrap material from things like old bed sheets and cast off t-shirts to use for this step, but today I'm using the last of some yellow cotton I had because if it turns out well enough to be used, it can be Kit's robe when I get around to casting her head back. 
I don't usually take the time to iron pieces or anything when I do these test steps because half the time they're gonna get crumpled up or cut up while I make changes and adjustments to be sure the outfit fits. From there, I move into the testing phase. Every time I make a pattern, I put it together at least once to ensure it fits the way I want, and also so I can better find ways to assemble difficult parts or figure out tricks that make assembly easier. It won't keep me from messing up later, but by the time I film instructions for a pattern, it's usually the second or third time I've sewn the garment. Rin's fancy two-toned pants were I think my fourth attempt before I filmed. I usually pause after every piece is added to try a garment on a doll and make sure it still fits the way I want. During the test run, I write a list of any changes I need to make, from lengthening or shortening pieces to adding darts. Doing a test assembly also lets me dig through my trims and notions and see what I need before I do the final version of the garment. In this case, I need some ribbons. In my story world, the majors have a stripe on their upper sleeve to represent the ranks they've already graduated from. Yellow is third tier, so Kit needs a gray and lavender stripe on her sleeves. I don't have gray, but I do find some silver. Unfortunately, the silver and lavender I have are also two different widths, so I'll probably want to go out and get ribbons in matching styles before I do the final version of this garment. I won't show the whole practice assembly today, though I will put the pattern up on my site. Construction is similar to the kurta I did, so there's already a video for a similar garment. But if you want to see me put together instructions for this specific pattern, let me know in the comments and I can probably fit it in since I still have to make Feral's robes with this pattern. If you've watched my channel with any sort of regularity, you've probably noticed that I tend to favor more simple designs in my doll clothing. Sometimes I get a little excited and do something more fancy, but on the whole, I like to make things that look like clothing, not costumes. Getting my work to where it looks like something that's actually worn is sort of a work in progress, but real people, especially historically, tend to wear pretty unremarkable stuff from day to day. When we see clothing we associate with specific cultures, it's usually ceremonial or things specifically made for special occasions. Everyday clothing is pretty sometimes, but most of the time I just wear jeans and a t-shirt because it's comfortable and easy. There are a few things less fun than high-maintenance laundry, so I like to make everyday kind of clothes. Fortunately, with this pattern, things work out pretty well on the first try, and I won't need to make any major adjustments. Probably because I already refined the kurta pattern I started from. I'll have to iron this before it can be used, but right now it's time to move on to creating a digital, printable version of this pattern. I head down to my computer desk with the pattern pieces. You can see I've been working on proofreading that copy of my book. We'll look inside a bit later. I grab a few pencils and some sheets of regular printer paper and start copying the pattern. This is pretty easy, just tracing pieces onto the paper one at a time. The hardest part is the really large or long pieces, like the front and back, that don't fit on a single sheet of paper. I have to break these up into several tracings to create something that can be printed, cut out, and taped back together. You can see my initial tracing is really simple with big open gaps. Sometimes I'm able to complete the pattern with a pen or marker on paper, but I do that less now and spend more time creating the finished version of the pattern digitally. Once everything is traced, I turn on Eustis, who is my all-in-one scanner printer copier that I paid entirely too much money for, and I scan all the pattern tracings. I grab my stylus, forget for a second that my tablet isn't touch sensitive like my husband's tablet is, and then I open Photoshop to get started. For simple rectangle or square pieces like the placket, I can use the selection tool and apply a stroke to the selection to create the new outline on a new layer. Then I set the brush tool to a hard round brush at a very small size and use the pen tool to trace each piece. I delete the old pencil layer and relabel the pieces with text. I admit that I have a font problem, don't judge me. 
I add in cutting instructions and markers, my watermark so people know where the pattern came from if they find it later and can't remember what it is, and I try to include measurement guides to help with printing too, at least on one piece. For the pieces that need to be taped together, I use a dashed line brush to mark where everything needs to be connected. This brush came in a free brush pack I downloaded years ago that was titled Lazy and was free for commercial use. I love it because it is named Lazy and I am lazy too. Once I finish tracing all the pattern pieces, I combine the images into a single PDF using Acrobat. I use a lot of Adobe software, I can't afford a subscription for CC these days, but this legacy license for CS 5.5 is more than adequate for my needs. At this point, my pattern's done, and I usually make them available for my patrons in the same sitting. With my afternoon's work done, now I can finally open up that book and share a look inside. I wish they didn't put that ugly not for resale band across the proof versions, or mess up the size of the barcode on proofs because they covered my genre label text, but the velvet matte cover feels really nice and the book's paper is so smooth. I started the interior formatting with a program called Vellum, but I wasn't completely satisfied, so I made refinements using Adobe Illustrator and InDesign. The map printed beautifully thanks to those changes, so I'm really glad I took the time to do it. For those who are squinting, the book's dedication says For the Posse, which is something my friend Breezy started calling the small support group I've had along the way, particularly her and our friend Michelle. They've been around since I've started this project, and have encouraged me every step of the way while refusing to let me give up. And then there's the first chapter. The emblem at the head of each chapter is the symbol on Feral's necklace, and while I'm going to make a little adjustment to it to be sure it prints as nicely as I can make it, overall I think this has turned out really well, and I can't wait for this book's release at the end of March. I'll put a link to the pre-order for the Kindle version in the video description, but if you're interested in print copies of the story I've spent my life creating, I'll be working out the logistics for a pre-order hopefully in the next week. That's all for today, though. Thanks for watching. Bye.